Tiola to one year seven in Vanton. Tiola to one year seven in Vanton, August 17. 1970-1997 was a general in the army of the Republic of Vietnam and one of the principal figures in the 1963 South Vietnamese coup d'etat which overthrew President Ngo Dinh Di let one EC7 in. Personal life. Don was born in Bordeaux, France. His father was the son of a wealthy Mekong Delta landowner, which allowed him to travel to France to study medicine. It was during this period that Don was born. He returned to France as an adult for his university study. He became a French army officer when World War Roman II began, later training at a cool spatial militaire de saint Don died in 1997. Military. He returned to Vietnam and served in the French back to Vietnamese National Army of the French back state of Vietnam, fighting against the VI letter 1 EC 17 in the First Indochina War. Don was a colonel in 1955, when he and then fellow Colonel Du and Bamman helped him though Dinti Isla to 1 EC7M establish himself in control of South Vietnam following the Geneva Accords and partition by helping to subdue the private armies of the Ho H letter 1 ea 3 o and Khao Dai religious sects, as well as the Bin Zion organised crime syndicate. Both were immediately promoted to the rank of general. With the proclamation of the Republic of Vietnam, military officers were faced with becoming Vietnamese citizens if they wanted to remain in their position. Don became a Vietnamese citizen. Don became DI letter 1 EC7MS Chief of Staff and presided over a ceremony in Saigon in which the French style military rank insignias were burnt and replaced with American inspired new insignias. In the early 1960s, he commanded the I Corps of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, which operated in the far north of South Vietnam in the border region along the demilitarized zone. He led his forces into the mountainous areas of the Central Highlands to flush out pockets of VI Letter 1 EC 70 C Letter 1 ED 9 NG resistance and to prevent further infiltration from North Vietnam. In all, his command took in five provinces. He often came into dispute with DI Letter 1 EC 7 MS brother and Go Din C Letter 1 EA 9 N who had his own autonomous private army and secret police and ruled the northern border regions of South Vietnam arbitrarily. Don was removed from command of troops and made the Joint Chief of Staff, where he was confined to an office with no troops. His work was mainly travelling to the airport to greet visiting American dignitaries. The I let one EC7 M feared that the respect that Don commanded could make him a possible rival for power, as the army leadership was selected for the purpose of preserving DI let one EC7 M in power, rather than defeating the communists. Don, then Army Chief of Staff, organised discontented officers, and in mid 1963 began meeting with Lucien Canin, a French-born CIA officer in Saigon with whom he culturally related. His closest confidant was his brother-in-law, General Le Van Kim, who was also trained in France. At the time, South Vietnam was gripped by widespread civil unrest due to Diem's suppression of the Buddhist majority, which responded with mass protests. In August, Don led a group of seven generals to meet President Diem and present a request for martial law to disband the groups of monks and their supporters from the temples in Saigon. Also present was Don's brother-in-law Le Van Kem, head of the military academy. Don claimed communists had infiltrated the monks at Zorala to 1 E3I and warned that all the morale was deteriorating because of the civil unrest and consequent disruption of the war effort. He claimed it was possible that the Buddhists could assemble a crowd to march on Long Palace. Hearing this, DEI letter 1 EC 7M agreed to declare martial law effective on the next day, without consulting his cabinet, and troops were ordered into Sagon to occupy strategic points. Don was appointed as the acting chief of the armed forces in place of General Levanti letter 1 EF 5, who was terminally ill with cancer and receiving medical treatment abroad. Don claimed DEI letter 1 EC 7M was concerned for the welfare of the monks, allegedly telling the generals that he did not want any of them hurt. The martial law orders were then signed and authorised by Don. The real purpose of Don asking for martial law was to manoeuvre troops in readiness for a coup, and he had no concrete plans to send the regular army into the pagodas. NH Usai stepped him and took the opportunity to discredit the army by using Tun's special forces and the combat police to attack the pagodas. After the raid occurred, Don privately met with Kanin and reiterated that the Americans were mistaken in believing that the Alvin was responsible. Don insisted that Dean remained in control, although NHU had to approve all of the general's meetings with DEI letter 1 EC7M. Don insisted NHU had orchestrated the raids, fearing that the generals had too much power. He asserted that NHU used the cover of martial law to discredit the generals by dressing the special forces in Arvin uniforms. Don insisted that he was unaware of the plans and was at Joint General Staff Headquarters when he was informed of the assaults. 
After the pagoda raids, Don was sought out by Dumao, who wanted to collaborate. In the wake of the raids, Don attempted to win over General Tonti Ishlatwanyi Faltidin, the commander of the forces which surrounded Tagon, so that he could encircle D.I. Latwani C7M. Den, who was recorded as being vain, was reveling after having taken credit for the pagoda raids, even though they were performed by the special forces of Colonel Lai Kwon Tong. Don organized for a national inspection tour with Din and played to his ego. Don organized many parties for Din and told him that he was a national hero worthy of political authority. He even bribed Din Suse to predict his elevation to political authority. After Din asked D.I. Letter 1 EC 7M for the Interior Ministry post in front of his colleagues and was rebuked and sent off duty in front of his colleagues, Din changed sides. Don and Din then signed orders transferring the forces based around him at 1 F9 no, 60 km south of Sagon from General H.U. Letter 1 F3 N.H. Van Kao, D.I. Letter 1 EC 7M loyalist, to General N.G.U.Y. Letter 1 EC 5 N.H. Letter 1 EF Yuko. This gave the plotters complete encirclement of Sagon. Two. At tent, 011 November, U.S. Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge Jr., General Paul Hawkins and Admiral Harry D. Felt, the commander of U.S. forces in the Pacific region, were invited to Geelong Palace by D.I. Letter 1 EC7M. Don had scheduled the meeting for the visit to Felt at the time to keep D.I. Letter 1 EC7M occupied as the troops were moved in and to keep the president in Saigon. They were accompanied by Don. D.I. Letter 1 EC7M gave one of his chain-smoking monologues and said that he would cooperate with U.S. recommendations. Before leaving Saigon, Felt held a press conference with Hawkins and Don while the rebels were rolling into the city. Thinking of the situation, Don kept glancing at his watch while waiting for Felt to fly out. The three men were standing as they talked, and Don, overcome by nerves, chewed his gum like a threshing machine and could not stand still, frequently changing his footing as he talked. After Felt left, the runway was closed, and Don brushed off Hawkins and quickly went away to get ready for the coup. Up to the last minute, Hawkins and Felt remained unaware of the imminent coup, despite Don's fidgety behaviour. The pair had paid a visit to Don to discuss military issues at 9.15, but instead of the Vietnamese general hosting his American visitors as Joint General Staff Headquarters, as was the norm, Don went to the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam Office. Although Felt was surprised, the Americans did not realise the reason for their unusual venue and then pointed to a map and wondered why two airborne battalions appeared to be idling. Don replied that they were going into battle and Hawkins nodded, unaware that they were entering Saigon. Hawkins had told the generals earlier that he opposed a coup, so Don avoided the topic. Feltz had been told of the existence of coup plans by Lodge, who falsely informed him that it was not imminent, saying there isn't a Vietnamese general with hair enough on his chest to make it go. Felt later said that Don appeared to be calm and composed. At 13 zero, the plotters summoned many senior officers who were not involved in the plot to the Joint General Staff Headquarters at Tanzon NH Letter 1 E Lenti Air Base on the pretext of a routine lunch and leadership meeting. M Letter 1 EADU and Don organised the invitations and set up the trap. At 13.45, Don announced that a coup was taking place and those who remained loyal to the regime were arrested. Shortly after 16 zero, D.I. Letter 1 EC7M Telephone GGS Headquarters. Don answered and stated the time has come when the army must respond to the wishes of the people because D.I. Letter 1 EC7M had failed to reform his leadership. The pair had a robust argument and D.I. Letter 1 EC7M asked the commanders to visit him at the palace to negotiate and work on a reform plan. The generals, remembering that he bought time for loyalists to come to his aid during the 1960 coup attempt by stalling the coup with talks and a false promise of reform and power sharing, turned down his suggestion. After the coup proved successful, Don promised D.I. Letter 1 EC7M safe passage from the country and asked Kanin to secure an American aircraft to take the brothers out of the country. However, Major NGUY Letter 1 EC5N Van in Hung, Min's bodyguard and one of the arresting officers, shot DI Letter 1 EC7M and NHU. Don maintained that the generals were truly grievous over the deaths, maintaining that they were sincere in their intentions to give DI Letter 1 EC7M a safe exile. Don charged NHU with convincing DI Letter 1 EC7M to reject the offer and blame Min for the executions, saying I can state without equivocation that this was done by General Du and Van Min and by him alone. Junt. Don then served in the Military Revolutionary Council that resulted from the coup as Defence Minister. A civilian government in cabinet led by Prime Minister NGUY Letter 1 EC5 and NG Letter 1 EC DC Tho was appointed by the MRC to ease some of the workload on non-military matters. However, 
the presence of Don and Din in both the civilian cabinet and the Amosi paralyzed the government's process. Din and Don were subordinate to Thou in the cabinet, but as members of the Amosi, they were superior to him. Whenever Thou gave an order in the civilian hierarchy with which they disagreed, they would go into the Amosi and give a counter order. During this time, men, Don and Thou wanted to coax back non communist dissidents and isolate those that were communists. They later said that they believed the Americans had become aware of this and grown hostile to them. At the same time, in accordance with the political strategy, the Amosi was reluctant to carry out large-scale offensives, which concerned the Americans, who wanted large-scale bombing of North Vietnam. Overthrow. A group of officers, led by Generals Nhi and Con, Tran Thien Kim and Du Mai were unhappy with their post after the 1963 coup and began plotting. Incriminating documents were concocted to purportedly show that General's men, Kim and Don, had been bought by French agents and were on the brink of declaring South Vietnam's neutrality and signing a peace deal to end the war with the North. Some of the documents were leaked to elements of the American presence in Saigon and were brought to the attention of some senior American officials. Hunt told various American officials that Don, Kim and General Mai H. Letouani F. Yuxuan, along with men, were pro-French and pro-neutralist and part of French President Charles de Gaulle's plan to neutralise Vietnam. Con claimed that the fact that Don had invited two members of the French National Assembly both from de Gaulle's party to dinner. According to one source, Kim and Min were also present, while another said that Kim, Din and Xun were there. Con alleged at the time that the generals discussed neutralisation there, while Don and Din always denied it. Another incident that occurred publicly was a January trip by Don and into Thailand's capital Bangkok for a military event was a press conference at which Don did not rule out de Gaulle's plan if it applied to both Vietnams equally. Lodge passed a report to Washington on January 20, alleging that Don and Din were potential leaders of a group that might go along with de Gaulle's neutralisation plan. He said that Don and Kim retained their French citizenship and had never at any time forsworn the possibility of a neutral solution at what might seem to them the proper time. He said that although he thought their policies against the communists were effective, none of us had ever discussed what the next step would be after the government of Vietnam had reached a position of strength. Perhaps they did favour the French neutrality solution at that time. On January 30, Con launched a coup, arresting Min, Den, Don and Kim, claiming that they were part of a neutralist plot, with the VI letter 1 EC70, C letter 1 EDN energy and taken to Da letter 1 ea one Con noted that they had served in the Vietnamese National Army in the early 1950s under the French colonial administration, although he did as well. The day after coming to power, Con further claimed to Lodge that Don was in possession of briefing papers from the Americans on plants for the bombing of North Vietnam and said that they were in danger of being handed over to the communists. On May 28, 1964, Con put his rivals on trial. The generals were secretly interrogated for five and a half hours mostly about details of their coup against D.I. letter 1 EC7M, rather than the original charge of promoting neutralism. As all of the officers were involved in the plot against D.I. letter 1 EC7M, this did not reveal any information new to them. The court deliberated for over nine hours, and when it reconvened for the verdict on May 29, Con stated, We ask that once you begin to serve again in the army, you do not take revenge on anybody. The tribunal then congratulated the generals, but found that they were of lax morality and unqualified to command due to a lack of a clear political concept. They were chastised for being inadequately aware of their heavy responsibility and of letting their subordinates take advantage of their positions. The four imprisoned generals were allowed to remain in Dolat under surveillance with their families. However, there were reports that the trial ended in a festive manner akin to a party, as the officers shook hands and made up with one another, with men reported to have commended Con for his fairness before organising a celebratory dinner for the generals. All four generals were barred from commanding troops for a period. Kim was banned for six years and Don 18 months. Officers were prepared for the quartet so that they could participate in research and planning. Worried that the group of idle officers would plot against him, Carl made some preliminary arrangements to send them to the United States for military study, but this fell through. When Con was himself deposed in 1965, he handed over dossiers proving that the four generals were innocent. The original documents that Conclaim proved his accusations of neutralism were neither presented to nor found by anyone. Brief Restoration In September, Con survived a coup attempt by Generals Duan Van Duc and Lam Van Fat after the intervention of the Young Turks faction of Nguyen Chan Thai and Air Force Chief Nguyen Khao Kai. To try and counteract the increasing power of the latter, on November 14, Con brought back Don as the Deputy Chief of Staff. However, the Young Turks were cognizant of Con's motives 
and continued to pressure him to sideline Don and Din in an attempt to gain more power for themselves. The Young Turks then decided to try and sideline Don and the Dalat generals by introducing a policy to forcibly retire officers with more than 25 years of service, as they thought them to be lethargic and ineffective. But most importantly, rivals for power. However, a civilian advisory body named the High National Council, composed mostly of old men, disagreed with this policy, and after refusing to approve it, the Young Turks launched a coup in December 1964 to remove the agency. In February 1965, Don was again in view as fat, and Colonel Falman Gokta made another attempt to overthrow Comp with the support of Catholic elements aligned with the Daivik Corp Dan Dan and Demas sympathizers. American intelligence analysts thought Don was involved in the coup, but altered their assessment when he stayed in Dorlat instead of heading for the capital. Eight months after the coup was over, Don told the American historian George Mitton and Cahan that he had been putting with TH Letouanier 3 o who had planned for him to become Defence Minister and Chief of Staff of the military, but said the Diviot had insisted on installing the Catholic KM. A month earlier, American intelligence analysts thought TH Letter 1A3 was planning to replace Khan as Commander and Chief with Don. Political Service In 1965, Don retired and was elected to the Senate in 1967 after topping the elections. He later served as the Defence Minister until 29 April 1975, leaving for the United States one day before the fall of Saigon, 